simulated realities. I think that that is something that anyone watching this channel has at least a passing interest in. Although I'd wager that for most of you, it's probably more than just passing and probably ranges from curious to excited. To that, I've got some good news today. I have not one, but two simulated realities that you can start playing around with today and for free. I am also running probably the most unhinged experiment that you'll see today. Okay, let's dive in. The idea of simulated realities has, of course, been explored in fiction for at least the last 50 years, from Tron to Star Trek's holodeck. Of course, there's The Matrix and Rick and Morty. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, let me know some of your favorites down in the comments. And on the games and interactive side, we have seen some pretty interesting developments happening. Namely, there was an NVIDIA demo of The Matrix in which all of the NPCs were connected to a large language model. I wasn't necessarily over impressed by that demo. The NPCs were very NPC-ish. To be fair, NVIDIA did show off an update to that technology that does look a lot more promising. That said, it was a video demo. No one has actually played with it yet. What we're looking at today are two projects that you can actually download and start experimenting with. The first project is from Fable Studio or The Simulation. You may remember them as they did make a lot of noise a while back, having released the all AI generated South Park episodes. Now, those South Park episodes were always meant to be more of an eye catcher to their underlying technology, which was AI Storyteller and Saga. Saga stands for Skill to Action Generative Agent. What Fable has been working on is Thistle Gulch, which some have dubbed AI Westworld, although it's actually closer to just being a straight Western. That said, we do have those Boston Dynamic robots now, don't we? If you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that I have been following Thistle Gulch's development for quite some time, and I'm really happy to say that it is now out in public beta, meaning anyone can download it and start playing with it. And by play around with it, I should probably clarify, this is not actually a game. This is what they are calling a mage or a multi-agent gym environment. This is a simulation of an old west town filled with 15 different characters who are dealing with the events of a murder. I'll explain how to install it in just a minute. And unfortunately, if you're on a Mac, it's going to be a bit of a thing. But for now, let's go take a look at the town of Thistle Gulch. So this is the town of Thistle Gulch. As you can see here, uh, we have our, our main character, Sheriff Cooper. I say that hesitantly because really you can explore from any character's POV. Um, obviously, a lot of the events happen to kind of coalesce around Sheriff Cooper, though, again, you can actually view this from any standpoint. What we're looking at right now is a screen capture from a channel called Mr. Claudie. It is linked down below. Uh, the reason that we're using the screen capture here instead of me running it locally is because I'm on a Mac. And again, it's a thing with installing. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So here's an interesting sequence featuring Cooper walking over to the town bar in order to talk to a character named Morgan. Uh, again, we can see here on the side, these are all of the characters in the town. Uh, we have... Cooper highlighted here, and we can make suggestions in terms of what action Cooper should take next. Um, obviously, there is some clipping issues still going on. Again, this is still a beta. Um, each of the characters end up talking to one another based off of the goals that each of these AI agents has been assigned. They also draw from their own backstories as well. Uh, in this case, Morgan is in love with the good Sheriff Cooper, uh, whereas, you know, Sheriff Cooper, he's too stoic to have time for the lady folk, so, you know, he's got to get this murder solved. At various points, you'll have options to branch your characters, any of the characters in town, into various directions. Uh, in this case, Cooper is being asked if he should talk to Rose Morgan about their mutual love or or plans for the future, uh, or he can go to, as you can see, it's, it is still a beta because we have thistle underscore gulch dot sheriff underscore station underscore building uh, to check for new evidence, uh, search the dead native for clues, or exchange resources. Cooper decides to let Morgan down easy, so they head out to the outskirts of town. I don't know, maybe somewhere in Morgan's backstory, she gets like really, really hysterical. Uh, yeah, they're gonna go have a chat by the old well. Cooper tells her, I haven't forgotten Rose and I never will. We will have that dance once more, I swear. You know, basically like I have to solve this case. This is why no one likes Jon Snow. Good guys are really boring. 
From here, Cooper decides to head over to the bank to do some investigating. Uh, and although we are following Cooper, it is important to note that we could very easily switch over to Rose and just follow her back to the bar where hopefully she's just getting blind drunk and making out with some other dude, you know, basically to get back at Cooper. At the bank, Cooper has a internal monologue where he is figuring out the case. Presumably Stoddard is just kind of looking at him going like, why are you talking to yourself, you lunatic? From there, Cooper heads over to the murder scene to do some more investigating. And it's possible as watching this that the reason for the tension might be the fact that uh, they've left the body sitting there like that. I mean, I, I can see why the native tribes people might be a bit upset about that. Cooper does spend a pretty good amount of time considering the whole murder scene. Uh, as we can see down below, there is a clock there. There, there is a day-night cycle within Thistle Gulch. Um, around 6.02 p.m., we get an option here and somebody decides like Cooper should just go play poker because, you know, as you do. And I know it's really silly, but I do really appreciate day-night cycles. It's fairly like common in kind of open world games, but man, do I love just kind of hanging out in like an Assassin's Creed game and just watching a sunset. I, I'm that guy. Now you might note that there is a like a dollar counter up here of two dollars and forty two cents, and yet that is actual real money. Uh, Thistle Gulch does run off of the OpenAI ChatGPT three point five API, so yeah, that is real money spent here. But there is a way to run this for free. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So one of the things that I wanted to showcase here is that how each of the characters in Thistle Gulch is its own character. Uh, this is from a video that Frank Carey, the CTO of Fable, put together featuring Black Jack Kane, who is, you know, obviously the villain of Thistle Gulch and far more interesting than Cooper. Uh, but as we can see here, he has a very elaborate backstory. We have the history of all of the things that Blackjack Kane has done, uh, and more so than that, we can also follow along with all of the conversations that Kane is having with the other residents of Thistle Gulch. So presumably you could go through all of the events that are occurring in Thistle Gulch from any perspective that you want. Uh, additionally, because you actually have control and can influence them as well, it's not like these are on rails and you may end up with an entirely different outcome. And I'm not entirely sure, but I feel that Blackjack Kane is also modeled off of Frank. As far as installation goes, if you're on a PC, you do have it pretty easy. Uh, there's essentially a one-step downloader available over on itch.io that is linked down below. Now, as far as that cost counter that we saw earlier in the video, yes, Thistle Gulch does default to using the OpenAI ChatGPT 3.5 API. So you do incur some cost there. However, there has been some work done and a way to get Thistle Gulch running using Olama or basically Llama 3, which is free. It does look like this takes a bit of doing as an FYI. Uh, it's not just simply plug and play. So if you're interested in trying this out, I would recommend going over to the Thistle Gulch Discord and uh, you know maybe checking in on some pointers and tips. Uh, additionally, you can also use Anthropics Claude 3 to power Thistle Gulch as well. As far as using the OpenAI method, which is the obviously the preferred method, it will end up costing you a couple of bucks. Uh, Frank actually has a full tutorial walkthrough on how to do that and install Thistle Gulch over on his channel. Uh, I will also will have that link down below. Lastly, if you're on the Mac side, I don't have the greatest of news for you. It is a bit of a thing, uh, including you know installing Python beforehand and then installing Poetry and a couple of other dependencies. I have not actually managed to get through all of this yet, but I am working with uh, Frank and hanging out in the Discord over there to try to figure out a way to put it all together in a simple to use tutorial, which I will hopefully have on the channel fairly soon. Again, to note, what we're looking at here with Thistle Gulch is essentially a demo of the underlying technology. Uh, what they're actually hoping to do at some point is to open source the runtime and have anybody be able to create and iterate from there. So whether you're on the creative side of things or the technical side of things, I would highly recommend hopping over to the Thistle Gulch Discord and, you know, seeing what we can do with this new tool. 
for our other AI world simulator, well, really more a town simulator. Uh, both of them are really actually town simulators. Uh, we have AI Town. This one has been around for a while, but there have been some improvements made on it. And trust me, things are about to get super unhinged. It's also way easier to install now if you're on the Mac side. Don't worry, Windows users, I do have you covered. Uh, although, I mean, come on, rarely do the Mac people get the fun thing first. So yes, while AI Town is graphically less impressive than Thistle Gulch, uh, it is still weirdly addicting. So each of these characters has a personality, a memory, and goals, and you know, you just sort of watch them interact with one another. But where the fun really comes in is, thanks to open sourcing, we can now edit each of their personalities and and of course I'm going to get fully deranged on them. Uh, this is where things get pretty insane. So installation is super easy if you're on the Mac side. I know that Pinocchio can be finicky for some of you. Uh, the best advice that I can give is to make sure that you are running the most current version. Uh, from there, we would just simply head over to AI Town here, uh, click on it, and then download it. Once you have AI Town installed, and this will actually install Olama on your machine as well, so you'll have a local LLM along with this. Uh, all you have to do is hit the start button. Um, from there, that will initialize. Uh, yeah, there's this weird thing where it just keeps saying launch El Llama or install it, but I have it installed, so just hit next. Uh, from there, it'll start uh, generating the engine. To finish running, you simply open the web UI here and uh, off you go. Now, the default personality characters are, I mean, they're fine, but they're the default characters. Uh, where the fun of this all comes in, what you'll want to do is before hitting the start button, you'll hit the world editor here, which will initialize. And then from there, hit the world editor editor UI. Now, one of my favorite movies of all time is John Carpenter's The Thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure you all know the film, but just in case, it is a 1982 film starring Kurt Russell, Wilford Brimley, and the always amazing Keith David. The plot is basically a bunch of researchers in a remote Arctic station, uh, but one of them is a shape-shifting alien. Spoilers, never trust a husky. So I decided to go full chaotic evil here and ask ChatGPT, hey, do you know the main characters of the thing? I then provided it with a copy of the baseline character traits of one of the characters in AI Town, which is Lucky. Lucky is happy and curious. He loves cheese. He spends most of his time uh, reading about the history of science and traveling, yada, yada, yada. And then had ChatGPT basically write bios of each of the characters from the thing in that same format. From there, I popped over to the world editor UI and was able to replace each of the characters with characters from The Thing. I did have to play this by making one of them The Thing. So I chose Norris to be The Thing, named him Norris The Thing. Uh, and his goal is that he wants to kill all the other members of the town and replicate into copies of them. From there, we just hit start and it's off to the Arctic. Interestingly, from the very start, the characters did seem to know who they were. Uh, they kept making references to the frozen tundra and uh, a couple of them kept talking about how McCready uh, here uh, had just returned from a mysterious mission. My speculation is that Olama might have known the plot of the thing and was able to parse that along via the character descriptions. But it wasn't long before the characters started talking about mysterious symbols and glyphs, which do not appear in the film. Uh, for example, here in a conversation that Palmer was having with uh, Dr. Blair, uh, let's see, Nalz's behavior has been more erratic than ever. Those symbols are giving me a bad feeling too. What was really interesting is at one point, Norris glitched and just started spouting off some random numbers. Uh, but what was really fascinating is that that got incorporated into the other characters' chats as they began speculating what those numbers might have meant, be they coordinates or timestamps. At one point, Palmer, talking to Childs, uh, starts to believe that there might be more to uh, this than just tracking down the creatures based off of the cryptic messages and numbers. Norris, who is the thing, is just starting to mess with all of the other members of the crew, as in this conversation with Nalls, where he asks, what's eating at you, Norris? You're not the only one to worry. And Norris just responds, pauses, then responds in a flat tone, followed by the sequence of numbers. Most recently, Dr. Blair has actually uncovered the fact that Norris Norris is the thing, but for some reason refuses to tell all of the other members of the crew. <laughs> Meanwhile, McCready has been getting increasingly suspicious of Blair, accusing him of hiding something and lying to him. 
And I'll give you, it is all pretty silly, especially considering kind of this like this 8-bit sort of Stardew Valley-esque uh, aesthetic of the whole thing. But I mean, I do find myself endlessly fascinated by this and constantly swinging back to check in to see what's going on. Another really fascinating aspect of this is actually when you dig into the terminal commands and kind of see what's happening behind the scenes with AI Town. It's here that you can kind of see how the model is working, but there's a really interesting and fascinating detail here. You can see here that it's reminding McCready who he is and who he is talking to. Um, and when they last spoke, it also reminds McCready about who he is, taking our character description from earlier, as well as who Palmer is. But what I find really interesting is that it concludes with this kind of like journal entry. Uh, this is McCready. I don't know what's going on with Dr. Blair, but I think he might be in cahoots with the things, whatever is happening. It's not good, and I'm going to have to keep a close eye on him and maybe start verifying his humanity, too. You can never be too careful when you're trapped in an isolated outpost with who knows what trying to get inside your head. Now, that doesn't appear anywhere in AI Town. That's just McCready's thoughts, which then get saved. He continues on by rating the interaction a 7 out of 10 in terms of how much he liked or disliked it. Uh, and then that essentially gets saved to McCready's long-term memory. I caught a really good journal entry of Norris the Thing uh, after an interaction with McCready. Uh, I didn't like this interaction at all. McCready thought he could outsmart me, but I've been around for thousands of years, adapting to every situation, manipulating every human who has ever dared challenge me. He was no match for my cunning. So yeah, I totally recommend giving AI Town a run. It is just a lot of fun just to kind of peer in and see what's going on. Again, on the Mac side, you can get this installed via Pinocchio as a one-click install. Uh, if you're on the PC side, uh, our friends at rosebud.ai have an instance running on their platform that is linked down below. And there's also just a straight web version that you can try out. That's all the default characters. Uh, and yes, if you are wondering, there are definitely lunatics out there who have already modified the map and are doing insane things with them. I think this is probably going to end up being some kind of AI town Diablo crossover. So that's a look at where we are with AI simulated worlds like today. And I'm really excited about this because it all just brings us one step closer to my ultimate dream of Skyrim, but it never ends. In the meantime, I should probably go check in on McCready. He's been talking about trying to find a hidden stash of dynamite. I thank you very much for watching. My name is Tim.